This is Poppy. Poppy wants to go in the other room. Poppy can't go in the other room. Poppy, you know that's off limits. So we've been leaving the door open and Poppy thinks that that's her room now. Everybody else gets their own room. No, that's not true. The chickens have their own house. Okay, <laughs> so that's, that's Poppy and this is my office. So in my office, I've recorded this video too many times and right now I just want it to be done. So I'm gonna do it real quick. Okay, so over here, this is the office. I've got like my soldering station, which is very questionable um, and has a spool of, uh, you know, um, magnetic wire on it and I'll solder, which is fun. And so it's a really, you know, not a great uh, $30 thing. Um, got me going and I want to try something that with a bit more oomph and style and so I got a hack out which is on its way so in uh, preparation for my overhaul I'm getting this video to record for posterity um, what it was like before now um, I have like my all-in-one which I'm really happy with the way it's set up now finally have it just floating here. Um, it was taking up a lot of space and um, so now it's taking up a lot of space but it's at head height as opposed to you know down on my desk space. So in the back there I can store stuff um, and get to it pretty easily. It's attached through a post that runs through and is connect connected there. So that is all the, the desk space that it takes up as opposed to you know like half the desk right? So it's no longer there anymore. There's another monitor over there, which I also use, um, <clears throat> and it's hooked up. So there's a keyboard there, and then this is, uh, which is on a folding tray. And then this is the slide out tray, which is extra wide. It has room for a mouse on one side and a mouse on the other side, which is connected to that keyboard, which is connected to that monitor. And that monitor is connected to this, um, <clears throat> this guy over here which is my Chromebook and the, so I run, I run Chrome and Chrome related things um, off of this. So this is my Chrome OS and then I have my Windows OS over here and then I have my Mac OS is on my laptop and uh, yeah and then I have, um, I have yet to really um, dedicate a Linux machine. My Linux machine is over here um, and it's sitting on uh, on a TV that I took apart. And um, anyways, uh, I'm getting so sidetracked. And then anyways, there's, this is the other side of the shop, which from the bench, which is full of my shelving and stuff. And it's all really random stuff. So over here is the shipping department, which is full of empty boxes, right? Great use of space. This is actually, um, it's a work chest that has, um, Lots of um, reworking tools that are specialty equipment that I don't normally use that much. Um, so I just put them away up there. Um, and then up on this side is the other sky shelf, uh, which has uh, another chest, uh, <laughs> which is actually empty. It's got an airplane um, that doesn't fly anymore, which is, does that make it an airplane if it doesn't fly anymore? And then there's a, a, a photo printer floating up above my head. And then in the very back corner, there's a, uh, an iMac. And so I have a lot of plans for this space and how it's gonna be redone, but primarily is this corner over here. So I have my laptop stand floating above. It's attached to the wall there. And here's a bookshelf. So this bookshelf is full of books. That is, the, and books are great, they're full of knowledge, but um, they're not really utilized very well. They're stacked in there. Uh, in weird shapes and angles and they have stuff on top of them. There's a, if you look closely, there's a little, you know, Mac uh, laptop right there. Um, I'm gonna resurrect that. That actually, I think, has a Linux partition on it as well. That one was fun. I was using um, using the Linux on that. And, and then over here is a bin full of um, used screens. These are all the broken screens that may still have some working LCD components and digitizer components and all kinds of stuff that needs to be recycled. So these need to go to the recycling thing and then more shipping stuff is up above here. So the the thing I'm trying to get across and then underneath, oh yeah, underneath, is uh, underneath my table is actually full of um, like old um, 
either there's an air filter down there, that's the only useful thing. Everything else is just uh, old towers, um, really not very valuable servers. There is a server that I built into the desk, and you can see it right there. Um, and this server is sitting on top of my heat plate, so my heat plate's right there. Um, and then on the mirror side, I have this other storage section, which has my UV curing lamp, which I have yet to use yet. I'm excited to try that out in the spool of antenna cable that I'm going to hook up. Um, and uh, an antenna too. Um, and the antenna should run directly into the attic via this crawl space here. So it's a pretty awesome sweet spot. I love it. Um, I love having two doors. One door that leads to my bedroom and one door that leads to, you know, the living room, the great room, and uh, the TV, the massive TV on the wall. And, of course, most importantly, uh, the kitchen. The proximity from workbench to refrigerator is very important. So, um... Anyways, I do need to work on making sure things don't get overly contaminated um, when I leave the shop. So I, I'm going to develop a like sort of a clean room protocol for this area um, to kind of make it a little bit more sterilized. Um, trying to keep the cat hair out because this space over here um, where the bookshelf is, is going to be my micro soldering area. And this is, I'm going to invest a lot of money and hopefully lots of hours, so I got myself a comfy chair to sit in. So for $25 off of Craigslist, I was able to get this comfy chair. And for another $25, I was able to get this computer desk, which is from Ikea. It has little wheels on it. It looks kind of flimsy, and it kind of is, but it's also perfect in some ways. It has, uh, it's made out of, you know, it has a metal frame. So hopefully that's going to be strong enough to hold everything that I need to be on it. Um, if it's not, I can reinforce it always. Um, but I'm planning on putting uh, uh, two monitors uh, mounted in the back there. And then um, there's going to be an air filtration system that sits down below. On this here, there's going to be a anti-static mat, uh, work mat. And then on the back, there's going to be my um, Amscope uh, microscope. And then um, my HACO uh, stuff, uh, my soldering, new micro soldering stuff. And then I'm gonna bring my old soldering stuff over here too. Um, I have to figure out uh, how everything's gonna work together with the new clamps and stuff I'm getting. But the uh, monitors in the back are gonna be used for diagnostic purposes and they will be able to hook up to this laptop, which is my primary work laptop. Um, it does pretty much all the heavy lifting um, I could maybe do some stuff on that Windows machine in there, but, um, and that's really just for Windows compatible software. There's a lot of software out there, um, that's easier to use on, on a Windows machine. Um, I have yet to figure out, um, the best things for each side and all that stuff. So I just keep all three operating systems, the, um, Linux, the, uh, yeah, and all of it together. So anyways, I could put my Linux machine on this, uh, you know, table very easily and run Linux if that ends up being better. But, um, but yeah, I love, I love Ubuntu, but I, I find, um, some things are easier and some things are harder. So, um, with each system moving on. So, uh, I'm going to get to work and, um, follow up with a more concise video of how I'm recycling things. I'll probably just, um, maybe do a voiceover and just take pictures from now on because I figured out how to make my camera work. So this is probably going to be the end of the first, um, first video. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I'm going to be getting to work. I will see you around. Hey, everybody, this is uh, Ibrahim here. I'm um, just, you know, checking in on how things are going. So this has got um, the setup that I have set up here is kind of like uh, still growing. So um, <clears throat> got the HACO um, two port station there on that side. I bought another one to run that iron over there. Um, the tips are coming in the mail. They'll be here soon. Um, I got a few that I have to pick up 
from Granger, um, but they're still in transit. Um, I did get my ultrasonic cleaner. Um, it's in the other room. Kind of like go peek at that on the way. Um, but yeah, this is um, the area where I had my old workspace. It's kind of been put on hold for the moment, but um, we'll get back to that here pretty soon. Um, but yeah, I, that's going to be the one of the main workstation areas, but then this is going to be the micro soldering um, station that I've set up here. I've got the mat down, That's um, and then you can see I got this board here in my board clamp. So I'm pretty excited about all these components coming together. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to fill you in on that. And then um, over here we've got the, see, these two monitors that I'm going to set up for viewing um, schematics and stuff. And the way I'm going to view them is over here. I just got in the mail a, uh, uh, it's going to be a screen mount. And then next to that is my microscope with the uh, boom stand and the light in that box, hopefully. And then inside Ali's studio is this baby right here, my Crest Ultrasonic, which I am so excited about. I am like, you know, yeah, jumping for joy that I have this on my team. It's really noisy in here because of the fan, but we'll walk back out. So anyways, I'm gonna post this and then I'll post another video real quick um, after I set everything up that came in these boxes today. And you'll see really how it's gonna look. Um, I'm hoping at the end of today to have it look, at least look like I want it to, um, if not function just yet. But the, the, the screen mounts are really gonna help with that. All right, well, I'll see you soon. Hey everybody, so I'm back and I got my microscope set up and um, I got that post in and I got my two LCD monitors set up um, on the back and then um, I ended up having to do a little bit of um, creative problem solving and uh, more woodworking stuff so that way now there's a little, um, I don't know if you've noticed, but probably not, but there's a, a gap that added right here. I had to strengthen this so that way I could um, drill the post directly into here so that way it's back and out of the way a little bit at least. Um, and that gave me um, room to put the microscope stand um, in here um, where I had planned for it to go. But once I got it in there, um, the boom arm came out and it was, there were two problems. Number one, the the boom arm kept um, falling down towards me because uh, the, the stand is just wasn't heavy enough, um, sturdy enough in it, that position. Um, and the other thing was it because there's a drop here, so there's like the, this one, and then there's another drop here to to the table itself, and then the other there's another section of table down here, so that drop from where the stand base was um, all the way to where my work surface was was so much so that I couldn't get things in focus properly. I have this um, so here's the arm you can see how it can kind of swing out of the way um, so yeah I have my niche device here um, clamp that I can clamp motherboards to when I want to heat them from the underside, that'll be really useful. But um, I was trying to, I mean, once I had the boards there, I could get them in the very bottom end of the focusing range. It didn't really give me any room to uh, focus things uh, more, um, and they had to be in the vise. For bigger boards, that might have worked, but um, I was working on like in a iPhone board, which I hope to work up to um, uh, that would, uh, the iPhone boards are so small uh, that I can't really clamp them easily, not with this piece. Um, I have some other clamping options I could use, but, uh, I would much rather work directly on the sol a solid surface. And so, um, to solve both those problems, I just moved the microscope from up here, the base anyways, to here, which gave me a ton of room up there which is going to be great because I have hopefully a soldering station coming so I can run all three of my hackos at once 
um, or not at once, but just have them all heated and, and up and running so I don't have to swap out the bases and the and things like that. So um, that will be really nice because I, I can have both of those there and then I can also have my HACO heat station, my hot air station. Um, I may move these over um, and then put the hot air station far to the right. Um, we'll see how that plays out in the end. Um, when that when the hot air gets here, it's shipping currently, so um, we'll see when it arrives. Um, but yeah, so there's the um, the new microscope and um, the latest edition with the LCDs. So yeah, I'm gonna post this guy and um, yeah, let me know what you think. Okay, so this has been a long time coming, but I finally got my HACO FR810B um, rework station. I'm gonna open this up for the first time and see what we got inside this box. Um, hopefully I got everything. Um, Come on. So here is the box. All right, so first things first on the top. We've got the user manual, instruction manual, which I have actually been over several times on the internet, so I know what to expect. All right, so that's going over here, not important. All right, here we go. This is more instructions in a different language. Okay, so first things first is the actual heating elements. Um, it has some controls here. One of these controls the vacuum. There's an S and a V. I don't know what that means. Um, yeah, so here's the heating element. Um, and then the whole unit itself is down below here. And that's stuff out of the way. So of course we got a HACO changing pad. That's silicone, don't burn your hand, power cord, yay! And, all right, and this is the, this is for the vacuum system. I don't really know if I'm gonna use that at all. I don't plan to be pulling chips with that, but who knows, maybe I will someday. All right, this is the, um, this is for holding the, the heating element, so it's going to drop in something like that. No. Like that. Ah, that's how it's going to go. Okay. So yeah, that's going to lock in like that to the side of that. And then here's our HACO. Now, one of the things that Mr. Lewis Rossman does not like is that it has no flat top. But one thing I saw on the internet, and sure enough, it does have this funky business here, but this piece right here is actually totally flat. So I don't know how big that smaller soldering station that he likes is, but you know, maybe they were super smart and decided that, that they could fit a little soldering iron right there. But I doubt it, and he's right, it's not flat on top, <laughs> and so, um, it's not stackable, but in my setup over here, I have set up a place where in, I do not need to stack it. I set up my system. So I have an actual, um, compartment where the hot air station is going to sit just like so, um, yeah, and then over here is this guy. Um, oh. All right. All right. Set this 
is going to work. Like so. So. Hopefully, that is going to work for me. And um, I think what I'm going to have to do is put some sort of aluminum or foil or heat shielding right here on this wood. Because what happens when you have a, you know, let's say I'm running this thing at full, full tilt, you know, like it's going to be at, um, let's see. I'm getting used to this. How is this going to... Yeah. Well, it is kind of going to be out of, in the way a little bit. I don't like that so much. We'll see about how far I can get this thing out and away from the... So yeah, stackable stackability is, is a useful thing. I'll give you that. But, um... Anyways, so if I have this thing at, at about a thousand degrees um, Celsius, or I think it's Fahrenheit or Celsius, I can't remember. Anyways, at a thousand degrees, and um, it, I set it over here and it starts to cool down, it's going to be blowing thousand degree air <laughs> onto, this, uh, onto this wood here. So I'm probably going to have to put a heat shielding system um, to keep it from burning the wood. But, um, yeah, I'm going to have to kind of tweak how things are in this space a little bit to make it functional. But, yeah, there it is, at least the setup. It, um, you, can, uh, you can see it. Um, right now, I kind of have everything set up with, as far as my soldering irons. I got, um, this is the, uh, the FM202, which is no longer... Um, it's an older machine, so I think it's going to run my thing. I've got the key for it. Um, I'm still waiting on the fuses, I think, or they're, they're on their way. So this guy still is, is not running just yet. This is the F, uh, FM203, the replacement. So this one runs these two guys here, and then this, uh, the micro pencil and the micro tweezers, and then I'm going to have um, uh, the, uh, I think this is the 227? or the no anyways this is gonna be like my main soldering iron and then this guy is black AOE is for soldering um, through hole stuff for hobby purposes not really for work um, but yeah um, that's kind of the setup there with the irons and then I got my power station <coughs> DC supply the top one is uh, digital and it runs up to 15 volts. And then the bottom one is analog. You can't really see it too well um, because of the microscope right now, but oh, yeah. the microscope is pretty much in the way. Yeah, that's gonna have to get fixed somehow. Anyways, um, yeah. So, I'm kind of move this shroud out of the way and we'll see just how everything fits together in here. Um, but, yeah. Okay, there's a little bit of light on the subject. Alright, yeah, I can kind of back up and see. We've got the, my workspace there. Um, I finally got my little, um, this guy will be for holding smaller boards. Um, yeah, I got that today. And then I redid my screen, so one is horizontal, one is vertical. Um, I'll have the board view set up on that one. Um, and then I'll, over here I'll have uh, the PDF files for the schematics. I realized the schematics are actually horizontal and not vertical, so I uh, turned that one sideways and the screens barely fit together. <laughs> uh, things are kind of tight in here, so um, uh, that laptop tray is all wonky. So anyways, um, I'll kind of get things going and I'll be back with a different video. All right. Thanks. And uh, 
uh, we'll, uh, yeah. And All right, these are a couple of images of uh, how I have my system finally set up. Um, I had to swap out the uh, screen because I had dropped it on its face and now it no longer works. It is super fuzzy and um, maybe I'll fix it someday, but I am kind of following Lewis's um, philosophy of not fixing tools because fixing tools is a waste of time when I can be fixing things that make me money as opposed to things that do not make me money. Um, anyways, so I have a screen there that uh, works finally after some doing some troubleshooting and then I was able to get uh, in the mail just a couple days ago um, the uh, component, uh, the I had to get some little glass fuses um, to make the extra hacko work and so I have all three of my soldering irons working and running and I was able to um, try my hand at some soldering, micro soldering a um, component uh, connector cable for an LCD onto a iPhone 5 um, logic board, test logic board and I failed miserably, <laughs> miserably so I have learned a lot since then, and um, kind of uh, yeah, I've got to adjust some uh, stuff with my heat gun and or with the rework station. The um, yeah, and uh, uh, you know, doing different things with different irons is really important, and I have a lot to learn. So I am learning, and I love it, and. Things are up and running finally, so um, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this little video of how I uh, set things up. I'll do a follow-up video once I actually can use the stuff. All right, hope you enjoyed.